how is everything? I gave you a little introduction, but I want you to introduce yourself to the panel as well. Okay, well, I mean, I think you covered it. Um, I'm Greer, for everyone out there. I've been practicing medicine for 11 years now, graduated from Jamaica. I work in ophthalmology, right. but I, over the years, developed uh, an interest and an appreciation for public health, which I admit I did not have while I was in med school. Um, mm -hmm. So I went to London and I did my master's degree in public health for eye care. And because, of course, I have a passion for eye care. So I hope to fuse my interests in both clinical ophthalmology and public health in the future for the rest of my career. But also just the wider aspect of public health and population health. And right now what we're seeing a lot of is inequity, health equity, and the lack of access, the lack of awareness and information, um, how social determinants of health affect an individual's health and how that individual's health goes on to affect population health. So, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot to discuss. I mean, with, with COVID obviously now that how it's affecting the entire world, how it's affecting us in Trinidad and on an individual level, how it's affecting people, which I think is great because that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So we're going to have these two amazing guests who are going to give us an insight to what it's like to actually have COVID. And I think what's, what's good about the speakers that we have on tonight is that they're both young, healthy, otherwise normal people like you and me, you know, and, and young people at the start of the pandemic, especially last year, people tended to have an idea that, you know, I'm young, I will get over it, I'm not going to be so bad, I could fight it off, COVID is not a thing. And that's yeah. just not, because we don't know how COVID is going to affect you. Every person deals with an insult to their body, a stimulus differently, and will react differently to the same virus. In addition to the fact that we now have different strains presenting, and we're seeing how that's been affecting the demographics of people, the demographics of the patients involved, and how it's been affecting us as a country. We've seen the shift. It's not just older people with comorbidities that are ending up in hospital, and unfortunately, um, succumbing, you know, it's, it's younger people who are having a really hard time who might have thought before this that they would have been able to fight it off and battle it off too. So I just want everyone to leave here tonight with the understanding and the appreciation after speaking to our guests that this is not a, a old people disease or something for people who sick already. We are all susceptible. We don't know how each of us is going to react if we do get infected, even if we are lucky and we personally don't have bad side effects or we don't feel sick or we're asymptomatic or maybe just a little sniffles, a little runny nose, we can still transmit that to other people who may not be as lucky as us. And it really drives home the point of, you know, just caring about each other, you know, like we don't want to see this continue to just ravage our population. Like the month of May has been devastating. We're hoping that June is a new month. We're hoping that we got some really good news today about mm -hmm. donation of vaccines that's coming from the US. I mean, I got really excited. Like I was literally like smiling for the whole afternoon when I heard that. But no, any. Right yeah, now, I good huh? and we take in all good news we could get right now, all donations, all gifts, what welcome. I, what I was going to say is that the vaccines themselves are not going to do anything and they're not going to help unless they get into arms. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big task tonight to really just get the message out, like answer people's questions, listen to their concerns so that we can encourage people to get vaccinated. For sure, for sure, for sure. All right, so let me get ready to bring my, my guests to the stage. Okay, I'm seeing Holly is here. Um, Lindell, if you're here, I want you to send your requests as well one time. But in the meantime, let's bring Holly to the stage. Hello. Hi, guys. 
Holly. Hi. Holly, how are you doing? Hi. Now, quickly, Holly, welcome to the panel. Thank you for joining us and taking some time out of your day to speak with us. Um, if you could quickly introduce yourself, give us a little brief background of you, and we'll get ready to start the conversation. Hi guys, I am Holly. I am a Brit, uh, living in Trinidad uh, since 2019, um, working over here, my new home or existing home now, home away from home. Um, and I got COVID uh, two months ago now, early in April, um, and just wanted to be part of this program in terms of bringing some education and awareness around what COVID can be and how it can affect um, the normal, healthy, active, 30-something year old. For sure, for sure. Well, Holly, thank you so much for joining us. I believe our other guest, Mr. Lindell, is here as well. To the stage one time. And We're going to bring to one time. Yes, but ladies first, so Holly will give her story first. Good day, good day, good day, Mr. Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi, good night, good night. How are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. Linda, you can introduce yourself to the team. Um, my name is Linda Nelson, uh, born and raised in Trinidad. I uh, had COVID for almost the same amount of, the, of years as her two months ago. And also to bring the awareness to a lot of people that this virus is something not to be taken lightly of. For so, sure. yeah, uh, I'm really glad to be a part of this journey here tonight to, to spread that awareness. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you, Mr. Lindell Nelson, for joining us. Now, as I said before, ladies first. So, Holly, we're going to start with you and your story. So, Holly, how exactly did you... How was it about like what was the first sign for you that like something not feeling too right right now? Well, firstly, um, I had none of the asymptomatic symptoms that they tell you to look out for. So I think we can all agree that we have it ingrained in our minds to look out for a fever and flu-like symptoms. I had none of those. So um, beginning of April, one weekend, I had like a series of headaches over that weekend, but I um, have a really kind of high stress, high pressure job. So that wasn't anything new to me after a really long week. So kind of just wrote it off to having a, a, a really... As, sorry, sorry to cut you, but as you're saying that, you, you have a high stress job. So tell us a little bit about your like daily routine. So you have a day, a day to day job, you work, you, you train, you... What is yeah, the so, um, I'm a, a client service director for an advertising agency here in Trinidad, and we work mm -hmm. all across the Caribbean and the US and Europe now, actually. Um, so my job is pretty demanding, lots of long hours. But since we've been in lockdown, my routine has been super, super simple, um, follow all the protocols that have been set out by our government. Um, go into the office once, maybe twice a week. Um, and outside of that, I'm home. Other than the usual, you know, groceries, pharmacy. Um, I exercise, but if I exercise, I exercise outdoors. I haven't been back into a physical gym I don't know. Even before COVID hit, I wasn't training indoors in a gym. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't in Tobago over Easter. <laughs> I was home. Um, <laughs> and I live a, a very simple um, life here. Um, mm -hmm. So the weekend, the weekend that I got sick, um, none of the symptoms jumped out at me as if to be as if something I should be concerned about. I started with a series of headaches, um, but again, didn't think anything of it given what I do and the week I had. Um, Monday was fine. I just felt really, really tired in the evening. Um, 
Tuesday, I had some sinus pressure, but we had really bad dust. And again, that's something I'm affected by. So didn't think anything of it. And mm -hmm. then the Wednesday I had to go into the office for a meeting. And by lunchtime that day, I got a cough out of nowhere. Uh, literally just started like that. And I was like, this is really weird. This is really bizarre. Like come out of nowhere, left the office, went home was meant to actually be in Tobago the next, that weekend and the next week. And for that reason, I was like, let me go and get tested just in case. I didn't think I had COVID at all. We thought I was just super run down. Um, yeah. Went and got tested the next morning. My PCR came back negative. Ooh. But I had, I have had a fantastic medical team and I have had a fantastic doctor since the beginning who said to me that um, he didn't like my symptoms, he didn't like how I was looking or sounding, and I had three out of six symptoms at that stage. I thought it could be a case of just having a really low viral load, mm. which is what happened. So self-isolated for three days, four days, that was the Thursday, isolated until the Saturday, and then went back and retested, which is when I got a positive PCR. Oh, wow. So that is something that we need to look out for with the... Uh... Just, so when you did your, negative, your first negative PCR, was how many days into your symptoms? Um, so the cough presented the Wednesday, uh, lunchtime Wednesday. I tested Thursday morning. Okay, and, you, and your, the cough presented Wednesday, but your headaches had started over the, the weekend. Saturday, yeah. yeah. So MOH class symptoms presenting officially from the Saturday. Um, yeah. Even though they weren't the classical fever, flu-like symptoms. I actually didn't get any flu-like symptoms until Thursday, Friday. And even then, the Thursday, Friday, I was like, oh, I've had worse flus than this. I never got a fever. Um, the symptoms were one by one. They were never all together for me. It was like one day I had a horrible headache. The next day I was exhausted. The next day I had body pains. The next day I had a cough. It was never sort of a combined set of symptoms, which is why I say at the beginning, I was very much like, um, I've had worse blues. This isn't so bad. But that was just the start of it. Unfortunately for me, what's happened is that my symptoms actually got worse as the time went on and to a point where even now I'm still struggling with some ongoing symptoms eight weeks later. Um, so, my, like I said, I had a fantastic medical team, both my private doctor and the MOH um, doctor who um, was charged with checking in on me daily. She was fantastic as well. Um, so it was on a series of medications to start, but I went through three sets of anti three rounds of antibiotics, three rounds of steroids, um, uh, bronchodilators, inhalers, and in the end, I ended up having to get a nebulizer for home. Um, I wasn't really aware of long COVID. It isn't something that is spoken about or hasn't been spoken about so much here in Trinidad. Um, when I speak to my friends back home in the UK, it's actually something that's very prominent in our age group. They perhaps don't have such severe symptoms, but they have longer running symptoms. Wow. Um, and this is something that I don't think has necessarily been spoken about so much here. Um, so the first, I went through two weeks of self-isolation and my symptoms progressively got worse. Um, where I ended up getting fluid in my lungs. I had um, uh, lung inflammation, lung scarring, intercostal bruising, um, which I'm still kind of struggling with now. And um, had x-rays where at week two, my x-rays were clear um, with no fluid in the lungs, but at week four and five, I had actually progressively got worse and then had fluid in my lungs and scarring and this lung inflammation, which was causing um, 
the real pain. Um, I never really, it, it was, it's really tricky because I don't think I ever felt like I couldn't breathe in terms of oxygen. My issue was that I couldn't take a breath. My chest was so tight, I couldn't breathe in to take a breath. Um, there were three or four nights which were just so painfully frightening where I could, I literally couldn't breathe and I had to sleep on the sofa um, pronate, so front down, just to try and get some relief. And there were a few times where, you know, we'd been on the phone to the doctor and they were like, yeah, you know, it might be worth you going to hospital. And I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> I'm going to fight it out. But in hindsight, honestly, um, it might have been better, even if just for some peace of mind, because I think the one thing with this, which is, it's really difficult for anyone to understand is, is the unknown. It's literally the unknown. You don't know if, I don't know if my chest is tight because of the internal mechanisms of coughing so much. So my muscles are restricted and the lung inflammation um, or is it because I'm not getting enough oxygen? Obviously, like everyone else, I was instructed to get the O2 reader. Um, and there were times where the O2 would fluctuate from in the 80s right back up to 99. Again, I'm not a doctor. Is that just a malfunction of buying something from Superfarm? Or is there something that's happening in my body? Um, yeah. And, you know, I think the reason that the health professionals do advise in some of these quote-unquote milder situations or borderline situations to go to hospital or to seek professional care is to um, really monitor. And that's the thing that I couldn't do as I'm not a medical professional. I really tried hard to stay away from going online because um, I knew that Clearly, what was happening to me wasn't like, um, it wasn't a written script. So we already know that this is a new virus that affects everyone differently. So me going online and researching what should happen, it made no sense. So I was really just trying to be present and listening to the medical professional advice that I was getting from the healthcare providers I had. Um, I think as well, one of the things that affected me that I hadn't heard about was that I had intense heart palpitations. And I mean, wake you up in the middle of the night because your heart is going through the roof. I would lie down and I would have a resting BPM of 100. And my natural is, um, my, my normal resting BPM is 54. So it's quite low normally so i might double that lying down and my heart was doing all sorts of crazy things um and the doctor said to me this is your heart literally fighting a virus this is your heart literally fighting back but again it's a symptom that i didn't know that other people had 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 or was a uh, was quite a um uh prevalent symptom until I started speaking about the fact that I had COVID and then other people said oh hey yeah that's something that I had as well but for me that was really scary especially because um I actually have a heart murmur it's it's benign it's absolutely fine but that was really scary for me anything to do with my heart or anyone I think would be scared by that but um that was really scary. The whole thing is scary because you just do not know what is happening to you. It's not like a cold or the flu that you know, okay, rest, drink fluids, in a couple of days you'll be better, do these things. Literally anyone and everyone could have different side effects, different reactions. Um, another thing for me is I would have days where I would wake up and feel quote unquote fine. And then by two, three o'clock, I literally would have to be like in bed asleep because I literally couldn't do anything. And that is something that still is lingering with me now, this post-viral fatigue, um, where- Alia, I... a question before we, um, before we 
get a little bit on Lindell's experience and then open the floor to everyone to just banter quickly between comparisons, etc. So just to, just to ask again, you were saying, and, and this is more like me kind of, I kind of want to understand it now too. So you are saying that a lot of what you felt in your experience was like a lot of shortness of breath in terms of difficulties breathing. Now, yeah. do you, by chance, suffer with like asthma or any of, of, of those other pre-con? Pre Nothing. I don't smoke. I work out five times a week. I walk my dog every day. Um, oh. I don't have any kind of pulmonary issues. Right. Oh my goodness. Wow. That is so shocking because you know a lot of these things, and yeah, you could chime in a bit on this as well. They say that some people say, oh, if you're fit, you take your vitamins, you're going to be good. It's just a cold. No. And that is something that one of the things that I've learned over the last few weeks in my research is that it's so unpredictable. You know, it's, a, it's such an unpredictable thing to go through. Some people bounce through it and are fine with or without vaccine. And then some people are down for a long period. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're fit or if you're not. You know, it, it really depends on how it comes, right? I want to, I want to segue a little bit to, to Lindell's experience. So Lindell... Tell the people at home what you do. You know, we know you're a fit man, so give us a little bit of your background as well, and you can tell us a little bit about your experience as well, and then we could all convey. All right, well, basically, um, well, I'm a barber, so there's more physical contact than any other. Right. Uh, I'm a person that really likes to exercise because I also play cricket professionally, uh, domestic cricket, so therefore I try to keep my level at, my fitness level at a certain level. And Getting this virus, uh, it was at work. One day I was just feeling normal, and during the day, I started having a dry cough. But me thinking, just probably something I just watched long because I was drinking water, thinking, all right, it's just probably a dry cough. Remember, I suck up for and it will go. It didn't even go. <laughs> it didn't go at all. I was just, I was like, this is boy. It's all right. I say, you know what? Uh, I will not think about it. So I, I went home that night. So driving on my way home, I started to feel a little tired. My body started to feel a little drained. And I just, instead of coming through the front door, I went through the side door because sometimes mommy does have the side door open. And I'm a person, when I'm feeling sick, I don't like to be around anybody. So I, right. I did not come through the front door. I came through the side and I went straight upstairs and I, put, I, I locked myself in the room. And I have a little niece. She loves to be with me because every time I come from work, she will, and I bathe and stuff, I will go in my room and she will come and want to watch Peppa Pig and do those other stuff. So, mm -hmm. and her mom would have been like, look at this want to come and spend time with you. So why are you not opening the door? I said, I'm not feeling well. I just want to let her stay off for a little while. All right, cool. So that, that time, night, the night went by. All right, that's okay. I'll take a Panadol and it should pass. Next morning, I still have this drive. I have a friend now, Ultimate Barber. He's on live right now. He came to check me and I was telling him, Bro, you know, are you having this kind of drive? He said, Serious? And I was like, Yeah. I said, But like this thing, the one thing? He said, So, and what are you feeling? I said, I'm feeling a little tired. He said, Nah, man, if you're taking your rest, you're probably going to go. It's, probably, it, it's nothing, it's probably that bad. So, after he, after he left and I went to my room, things started to get bad. I started to get fever headache, uh, still fatigue, and I'm in my room there with my mommy, and I'm like, well, why don't I get tested for COVID? I, I doubt it's COVID, man. It's just the cold. Huh? It's just the cold? Went to Mount Hope. When I went to Mount Hope, I, I, I told the nurses who take any the, the vitals, the, the situation I'm having. And it had a doctor there as well. And they didn't even think of it as anything like that. So they just gave me a seven-day leave. So I just took it, I said, all right, came back home. The night now, high fever, loss of taste and smell, headache, diarrhea, everything I tried to, everything I tried to consume the, the other day, I vomiting. So, so I tell mommy, she said, go back again and tell them. I went back again. They took the test. Friday, they called, the Monday. Friday, they called and said, you are, you are tested positive. Hmm. Uh, then just take your, your vice 
vitamins, plenty fluids, hot liquids, and so on and so forth. And I was like, okay, cool. I will just do that because I know that I'm a young person. I am fit. Mm -hmm. All right, I will just bypass it. This, is, this, is, this, is, this should be something easy for me because my immune system should be high. So unfortunately, I get hit with the worst. The, the next day, not even like two days, the next day, shortness of breath. Shortness of breath to the point that if it has to be a position where I, where I lay, that I wasn't breathing properly. So I was having to lay arm um, like down on my side. And that's the only position that I was actually feeling comfortable. Until where um, it reached that so bad that mom had to call the ambulance. And she was like, Linnell, I'm sure it's not that bad. I said, mommy, call the ambulance. When the ambulance came for me, my oxygen was reading 90 to 92. So then it was like, you need to go down to Coover. I said, all right. Cool. When I reached in the ambulance, they put me on oxygen support. The oxygen support helped a little bit, but when I took it off, because you know, you're just thinking like, what is it really doing? Took it off. I said, I put it back on. When I put it back on and I reached down to Coover now, I realized that I'm not get, being able to breathe on my own properly. So the same night I reached there, I asked the nurse who was kind of setting me up on the bed. I was like, nurse, asked, you feel I'll get through this? She's like, yeah, man. That people came in here worse than you and they walk out of here. But I know to myself, you were just telling me that so I feel okay. Right? Because the situation where, where I, how I was feeling, I could not really walk on my own. My breathing started to get worse, even though I was there and I was in the oxygen support. So I had to put the cylinder I think on five, five liters. So I was actually in the oxygen. You hear it? Hard with the nose. Hmm. As I reached doctors, just coming, once it's a blood test, to the point where I was so dehydrated, like no veins were showing, like you were clicking. So it was just needles all over my hand here, just to get the IV to go in. Um, every time they bring something for me to eat, I vomit it back out. So they, they bring something for me, I still vomit it out, diarrhea. Uh, and, uh, it was just getting worse. And it reached the point that I still had another nurse. I said, you really feel I will make it through this? Said, Why are you asking me something like that? I said, because I believe I'm not going to make it. I, I ready to give up. Hmm. I was just ready to give up out. What was going on with me because me seeing myself like that, it, it was one of the hardest things to actually like just what is that be deteriorating? Linda, like Linda, do you know you know what your oxygen level was reading? It was reading 94, 95. And what, what should the regular oxygen level be? 98 or 100. Okay. And uh, so you literally was at a point where you almost was, you thought you was going to give up. Yeah, I, I, I was just in that frame of mind. It's what? I probably this is, this is it for me because the, the way I was feeling that struggle to breathe, it was hurting until the point they came and they did their experience to have pneumonia in your chest. Mm. I have to go to ICU. So I'm in ICU now and I have a guy who's 25 years old. I'm 27. A guy who's 25 years old have a tube down his throat, and the doctors came to me. Six doctors came to me and tell me the same thing. If I if my breathing don't get better, I will I might end up like how this guy is. And I every day you waking up and you watching that guy and you saying, "Wait, well, this is the state I really want to be in." Wow. Because for, you, for you being this healthy person, this is this is how you end up. That sounds like, of course, definitely it was a physical battle, but with seeing. That gentleman across from you, that sounds like it was a, a mental battle as well. Yeah, it actually, it actually was. It, 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 every day, like every day, even though like the doctors come in and they, they do the vitals and they take my pressure, sometimes, sometimes my pressure is 150 something, over 90 something, sometimes 160 something, to the point where the nurses are saying, um, you don't suffer from pressure? You, you. I said, no. She said, all right, let me check it again. 
same thing. Once you see something, I say, I say, what are you doing on your boy? So I started to get frightened, more frightened now. Because I know to myself, I don't have any sugar. I don't have hypertension. So how am I thinking like this? So as she was saying, I really don't know what's going on with this virus. The virus could just be doing anything and you, you just did. And I really wanted to, I, honestly, I really wanted to give up. I, I don't want to sound like, like a line to, to myself, but for that pain, I never enjoyed that pain ever, nowhere before. And I feel in that pain and that, that, that struggle to breathe, that was really hard for me. And yeah. like, time went by and I ended up meeting some friends in the, um, in the ICU, some old guys. Um, that kind of keep me insane. One of the guys was like, don't give up. Say, you know, what's that thing you should do? You must pray because they, that man does answer. Things. And I, I kept praying, praying, praying to the point where they sent me back down to um, the ward where you're kind of recovering. And then after they sent me to the adult tower. There's a new tower they opened with just a Rima, nurses, and some doctors. And it was just me alone in that room at that time. And I was in the room alone, and I heard a voice whisper to me saying, I see you. Never heard any voice like that in my life. I, me alone in that room, I heard saying, I see you. I was like, what, what was that? Uh, so it came closer, and then me now getting frightened. I was like, go from here? I don't know what it was. I said, does it go from here? So I pray because, I, all right, you're in a hospital. People just die. You don't know what could be going on. So I pray and I ask God. I say, God, if this give me a sign because I know I'm not a person that really come to you to anything because I, I, I was uh, really not, I was never that close, but I'm willing to be close to you. If you could please answer me. And in a voice I heard, yes. And I got frightened and I started to cry again because me, even though I think everybody have this experience, some people just have the, the questions about Christ, and some people will have the doubts, and some people might not be as strong with Christ. But what happened to me that day when I pray and I actually get that answer that changed my whole life of things? I started to take things more serious and, um, and, and actually get closer to it because I believe the struggle that I was going through was just not me alone fighting it. But he was making sure I get through that struggle with him too. Nah, man, for sure. Lindell, were you always, were you always a, a very spiritual person, or this was something that brought you to that? No, I, I, I used to pray, yes, but mm -hmm. I don't. I, my, my beliefs and my my um, intent of learning more about him was not as strong until that moment. I would not. I would. I, I know it's not something good. That you wait till something like that happen, but is is it, it, it actually it was an eye opener to me, and I actually appreciate it because that time of giving up and him being there because he has put his strongest angels to fight the toughest toughest battles, right? And I mm -hmm. believe he had a purpose for me right now for me to do what I am doing here, which is making bringing the awareness to a lot of people that probably not taking this as serious. People who are my age group are not, and they say, "Ah, young, I will fight this off, man. This is just a virus that people are making a, a big thing of, and uh, my immune system big. But at the same time, I was a person like that. I was a person that was saying the same thing, and look what happened to me. And I wouldn't really want that to happen to anybody else. And I, I, I really would advise that if anyone is feeling ill or anything like that." Please put your family in consideration. All those people who sell the party and stuff, please put all your family and other families in consideration because this virus is something that I would not like to reach the your household because it is something very dangerous. The experiences is not something that you will like. So, yeah, that, that's basically my experience. For sure, for sure, for sure. Lindell and Holly. Thank you guys, you know, for, for sharing your story. Um, boy, first of all, we had to thank God that you right, that all could stand strong here to share these tough stories with us today. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. This is Dagla. We take a shot with Carnival Tribe, and we are talking to two of our friends here about their COVID-19 experience.
is both young, well able bodied individuals right here residing in Trinidad and Tobago. And if you all have any quick questions, there's a question box here right now. I want you all to analyze the question box. I can ask a few questions while I bring Dr. Gray Eitan back to the platform. Boy, nah, that, those both sort of stories touch me differently there. You know, we as young people, we think that it's fine, you know? We think that everything will be cool. They say, oh, well, young people will bounce back and these kind of things. And it's, it's to hear these stories from you all is shake. It rattle your cage, you know? It shake you up a little bit and it makes you, it makes you appreciate life more. And it also makes you take, not take things for granted. And really get on the straight and all We cannot be going in the private zest. We cannot do it. <laughs> we cannot be breaking protocols. Claire, welcome back. Welcome back to the forum. Also, ladies and gentlemen who are I'm back. If you all have any questions for Dr. Aitan as well, feel free to ask. Um, Holly, how does it feel in that story as well? And anything else you want to add before we start taking a few questions? Yeah, I mean, um, the reason I actually um, shared my story originally a couple of weeks ago other than just kind of still struggling with it myself, was that I personally, uh, and I don't know about anyone else, given this, I was the first person I knew who had COVID, because um, this was back in April, right? I didn't actually know anyone here who'd had COVID. And honestly, I felt like guilt, shame, because I'd done everything right. And, um, you know, I, I, I honestly felt ashamed and I felt guilty and I was I didn't want to tell anyone and and that was a side of like the mental side of it all and then I started hearing some of like the really stupid comments about um, your BMI just needs to be this and you just need to exercise and eat your fruits and veg and be healthy and you'll be fine and I was like well actually let me just be real and say that like, hi, I'm, I'm a 33 year old fit, healthy, active, non-smoker, um, you know, who exercises regularly and looks after themselves. And I am eight weeks later and I'm still struggling. Um, this is a different perspective. Yes, you absolutely can be young, healthy and be asymptomatic. You could have really mild symptoms. You could have you could end up in hospital. Like there is no set rule as to how this thing can affect you and continues to affect you. For sure, for sure. For sure. No set rules. Yeah. Yeah. Are you I, think, I think both stories. Yeah, both stories. I mean, thank you both for sharing the stories, the unique experiences. And I think it's very valuable for young people, other young people, ourselves to hear what can really happen you know and i think holly it's important as you mentioned we're not talking very much about long covid in trina has been mentioned but people are not really thinking even after you get after you have covid and you maybe test negative people a lot of people don't realize that yeah you might have a mild a mild episode of covid when you're when you're positive but the symptoms can really linger and long covid really is a really um devastating thing Yep. And with Lindell, I mean, your story, it's, it's, you end up in hospital, I mean, it was obviously more severe, and you can probably tell how things went from not being so bad, and think you had COVID, to just getting really bad relatively quickly, and that just points out that things can change very suddenly, even in young people, even in healthy people, and we genuinely just don't know, you know? Um, Lindell, I don't know if while I cut off, you'd mention, but how are you feeling now? Um, I'm actually feeling good right now. Um, still a little short in some breath sometimes. Um, my smell and taste actually come back because I was actually looking up ways of things you could do that to train your sense, your sense to come back. Yeah, but actually, that, my recovery is actually better every day. That's good, man. That's good. And Holly, how are you feeling? Well, now 
in present day? You said you still had some lingering events after. Yeah, um, unfortunately, I'm, I'm still um, affected somewhat. Um, suffer a lot with um, what they call like post viral fatigue or uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. I actually really struggle today, and it's taken me all day basically to get dressed and in the shower because. My body was in so much pain. It basically feels like you have a flu, but you don't have the flu. Um, so, but I'm here. <laughs> um, and it, it's triggered by small amounts of exertions, things that are normal. So mine was triggered today because I um, sweat and mopped. And uh, I've been flat out for the rest of the day. And so things that used to be really normal, like climbing the stairs or working out or doing your job and going to work now take a tremendous amount of effort. So um, still really, really struggling with that. And um, some of the internal bruising, which just makes my chest really sore still sometimes. But um, yeah, it, it's honestly a day by day thing. And I think that um, if I'm being truly honest, um, the mental health side of things is is definitely a struggle um and continues to be a bit of a struggle especially when you know you were in i was in an extended self-isolation personally and then went straight into soe and in lockdown and i haven't had any um kind of outdoor experience since then um but yeah it's it's um it's definitely still a mental battle at the same time Sure, for sure. Gray, are you there with us now, right? Gray, are you hearing me? Dr. Aiton. Some of these you comments, submitted questions. Do you guys know where you picked up the virus from? No, I was never contact traced. I have no idea. I'm not sure if you can hear me. You don't know where you got it from, and Lindell, you said you may have got it on the job site. Yeah. Right, right, right. Let me see if I could. Um... questions until we get Gray back in action with us. How did this question, how did COVID, how did having COVID affect your mental health? I know Linda touched a bit on that. Holly, did it, did it affect you? Was it a game at any point in time? Were you feeling like things were getting a little crazy? Yeah, I, I think I'm still affected by it. Um, oh. honestly, given the fact that I'm eight weeks later and I'm still struggling. For me, it was the fact that I would have days or half a day where I felt better and I was like, great, I'm beating this. And then I would be wiped out for two, three days afterwards. Um, mm -hmm. And that took a massive toll mentally. Um, on top of that, the fact that like you just, your body physically, you genuinely don't have that energy to then fight your thoughts and any kind of like intrusive thinking that you might have on top of it required an extra level that I definitely struggled with. Wow. I could imagine. I could imagine. And Linda, well, you touched on that as well. It was a mental battle for you as well. Yeah. Or oh, somebody Holly, do you know? No, Holly just said she doesn't know she got it. Okay, this is another question here for Gray. But I wanna see if we could get Gray back. 
in the mix. Let's see if she can come back. With yes, Greer. I'm so sorry about this internet connection. Greer, I have a question for you. If you could, if you could hear me. I'm hearing you. Someone is asking to say good night. I have a question on the recovery process. My 21 days is ending next Tuesday, but the doctor said I need to take do another test. You guys, and I can't see the question. It's too long. Yeah, I'm not. Do you have advice for people to be covering on their coming up to 21 days? What was the end of the question? Did you see it? I can't see the end of the question here. So, Ronaldo, if you could retype your question in the comments, I would look for it. Yeah, I'm only seeing the beginning of the question. Yeah, we can't see the end of the question there. But um, to my panel, do you all have any questions for Greer Item? Because as I said, today's and this, let me take a short campaign, is about vaccination. Have either of you all been vaccinated? Is it as yet, or do you all have any questions about it? We can talk to Dr. I. No. And ladies, please, I'll start with her. <laughs> um, no, I wasn't vaccinated before I got it. The plan was to get my first vaccine the week after, um, but I got sick. Um, for anyone thinking or asking the question, I absolutely will be getting a vaccine when I can get it. Um, do you have a question about that in terms of do you have to have uh, do you have to be rid of any antibodies before you get the vaccine and how would you go about checking that here in Trinidad? Okay, so that's a good question. Um, you can do antibody tests here in Trinidad. You can do a blood test that will let you know if you have um, residual antibodies from your infection. Do you have to get rid of your antibodies before getting tested is an interesting question because when you mount a response, when your immune, immune system mounts a response to disease, you have an initial set of antibodies that are less specific and deal with it immediately. And then your body actually produces what we call memory cells, which tell your body later on okay, if this, if this virus comes into the system again, this is how we're going to attack it. So those set of antibodies tend to linger on for a longer period of time. So that's why you hear, them, hear people saying that you're, after you get COVID, you're immune for at least 90 days or you're immune for six months. It's a matter of still having antibodies. The antibody level may wane and it wanes for, at different time periods for different people. So no, you don't necessarily have to wait until your body level is down okay. to get the vaccine. What you do need to wait for is advise at least 14 days after you've tested negative. You give 14 days and it's usually advised to let your symptoms clear as well. Obviously, if you have long COVID, you're not, your symptoms are not necessarily going to clear before yeah. we know that. The vaccine has actually been shown to reduce the symptoms of long COVID in some people as well. Um, so that's that's another thing. It does help with symptoms of long COVID. But to answer your question, no, you don't have to wait until your antibodies go down. You do have to have a negative test for at least 14 days. And it's good to have, if you do not have long COVID, it's good to have your symptoms for 14 days. And then you can get the vaccine. Just to note... Um, that in Trinidad, our stance is now officially that you created three months after you've had COVID. So the 14 days isn't really relevant to us, but three months after you've had COVID, you can go ahead and get the vaccine. It's not necessary or mandatory to test your antibody levels. That's something that you can do if you like. Yeah. Nice, nice. Thank you. Lindell? Lindell, you have any questions? Vaccination. Dr. Aiton? Yeah. Uh, well, she just covered um, the three months before you could go and get the vaccination. Because actually, I was thinking about going to get my vaccine 
taken because the line of work I am doing, I'm more in contact with people. So I think I will need to be vaccinated in that case because trust me, I do not want to get this virus because that is the worst. So yeah, I think you just covered my question that I was actually going to ask because I know some people were saying it's six months or three months. So I think it's three yes. months now. Uh, Initially, our government was taking the stance that they were not giving it for six months. But they've recently changed it to three months based on a WHO recommendation. But different countries have different guidelines as well because um, in different places you can get it, as I said, 14 days after you've had COVID. I'd like to know, do you think, how did you feel about, va about the vaccinations before getting COVID, did you want to get vaccinated? Were you open to it before, or did your mind just change because you had COVID? It was something I was contemplating about because you know you have different speculations about it. But then... that will will we'll like to see things happen in front of the eyes before they actually do something. And I, I that was my kind of hesitant about it, but having, ha, but getting the virus now, seeing the things that they actually experience, it, I really advise people to get the virus. Because it, it, yeah. it, And you bring up, you bring up a good point as well, when you said, you know, you don't want to get this again. Mm -hmm. It is possible to get COVID more than once. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. So, it's something that people aware of you might think oh i had it already i can't get it again yes it is possible yeah, and how you did the first time does not necessarily indicate how you'll present the second time you can have it very mildly or asymptomatically at first and then get it again and be very ill so you just don't know you know so that's a good point that you brought up and i'm happy that both of you are eager to get your vaccine as soon as you can and I think from having your real life experiences, you all are the best people to tell the people around you to share with your community how important it is to get vaccinated. Definitely, definitely. Um, to revert to Ronaldo's question, Ronaldo was asking, do I need to, he, he went through 21 and he wants to know, do I need to take another test before seeing my family again? The doctor said, I don't have to, but I'm still curious. You got the he said thank you, you you guys experienced me. So he had COVID and he's recovering now and waiting the twenty one days. Yeah, the twenty one days have passed, but he hasn't taken a second test. So he wants to know if it's necessary. If he's not feeling it's not it's not absolutely necessary because as we're discussing, he'd have to wait the three month period anyway to get the vaccine. So no, it's not absolutely necessary to have the negative test. Um, the the doctors who would be checking in on you will again they will advise you if they don't think it's necessary. You don't have to bother. If you really want to do it and it'll give you the peace of mind, then in by all means, there's nothing stopping you from it as well. Right, right. Thank you for that break. Now, in closing, guys, again, thank you so much. I have one more question for the both of you. Is there anything that you wish you knew before you went through this COVID-19 experience? Is there anything you could go back, if you could go back in time, is there anything you wish you knew or is there anything you wish you could do differently? Uh, I have... Go ahead. No, you go, you go, ladies first, because it was ladies like... Ladies first, Holly, Holly Chris. <laughs> um, I personally wish I knew more about long, long COVID, and I wish I knew or was more aware, made more aware of the fact that um, just because you're young, fit, and healthy doesn't mean that you'll either be asymptomatic or have a mild case, and that symptoms can vary widely. Um, depending on who you are and how your body is made up. Thank you, thank you, Holly. Um, at some point in time, you will drop your guard, and I think you should just keep. Even if you if you're a person being very cautious about it, just try not to drop your guard. 
because that moment is you just drop your guard is when something get actually happen so if you are if you are a person that like to be very sensitive and keep in your distance keep doing it because you do you, you, you really don't know what can happen and even though if you are you are young fit person don't tell yourself you cannot get covid or do not tell yourself that you can just fight it off in a gym because anything that happen you don't know different people feel different symptoms so as i said before this keep that guard up that's basically what it is thank you for sure for sure I appreciate the insight great yeah. quick question someone at home question. great someone is asking if you doctor i turn a vaccine and which vaccine did you get I am. I got my first shot of Danica almost 2 months ago. So this week at this weekend will be my 8 week mark. So I'm due for my second shot next week. I'm waiting patiently for the ministry to call me just like everyone else to let me know when my appointment will be, when exactly, but I'm due for my second shot next week. As I said I had the AstraZeneca mm -hmm. shot early roll out when they were doing healthcare workers. I did have about 24 hours of side effects. Relatively mild. I didn't need to take any medication. I just had a dull headache. I had dull nagging body pains. Um I felt tired, but I was luckily able to just sleep for the day and once I rested, I felt better. I did take medication as I said and by the so I got it on Friday afternoon. Saturday I was flat out in bed. Um felt like i was recovering from carnival as i said on tuesday felt like an ash wednesday and by sunday morning i was my headache was really really mild at that point and i would say i was back to normal so i am talking from experience as well i'm not telling people to get the vaccine and then not getting it myself i absolutely believe in it i think it's it's important it is literally our only way out at this point the quicker and the more people we get vaccinated we will start to see the numbers dropping there will be less people that will be ideal hosts for the virus to be able to attack and will get through this by vaccination i got astrazeneca but it doesn't matter whichever vaccine you can get is the vaccine that is best for you all of the vaccines are approved by who they all shown to be safe and effective and they will all help us get out of this pandemic So it's really just important whatever okay. vaccine you can get it is your turn to get it let's get shots let, let's let we take a shot you know that's what we here to talk about let we take a shot for sure for sure now guys thank you so much to each and every one of you for taking the time to sit with us share your story share your experience and really really appreciate you taking the time been a lot of insight a lot of eye opening stories like things that have been especially from young individuals so in closing i'm going to let everybody say their final words before we wrap up start with ladies first holly and then lendel and then doctor then and then i will close up do we have we have time for one more question fingal yeah man yeah man because i saw a question pop up it's disappeared now but i think it's really important that we just just maybe get a little insight from each of you mm -hmm. the mental health aspect of covid we talked a lot about the physical aspect but the mental health aspect of covid is really really important there's been um a, a significant increase in anxiety depression and a lot of mental health symptoms that people may not be talking about and i think it's important for other people to know that you're not alone so just briefly if the two of you can just let us know how do you think this has affected you from a mental health point of view and maybe what have you done to try and help that or to try to um yeah to try to to help how you're feeling from a mental health point of view well are we will let her first and and then your in your final week Greer, when you were done, spoke a little bit about the mental health side, but we could we could ask okay. how how they've been coping. What are, what are maybe some things that they do now that assist them in maintaining their mental health? So, how sure. first we let how we start first, and then we'll we'll wrap from there. Um. Yeah. To your question, definitely. Um. 
definitely struggled and struggling with it, not gonna lie, definitely still present. Um, definitely hard that um, I don't have access to my family or my support group and haven't been able to see my family for nearly two years now um, because the borders have been closed. But um, I think personally it was a struggle because like I was saying, I went straight from three week, four weeks of self-isolation um, because my symptoms uh, were lingering for so long straight into an SOE. So all of my normal coping mechanisms, exercise, outdoors, uh, seeing some friends, um, just kind of normal healthy habits. Um, haven't had access to any of that for now nearly, uh, well, this will be my third month. Um, so that having to adjust and try and find ways to recreate that is definitely hard and creates um, or requires rather some real perseverance. Um, I think being open about it is really important. I don't think people speak about mental health enough, especially not in the Caribbean. It's something I'm a massive advocate for. Um, and so I will be the first to say, hi, I'm Polly, I'm 33 and I'm struggling. <laughs> uh, for all of those of you out there who may also be struggling. Um, but it's okay, you know, and, um, uh, you know, there will be light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, be looking for the light at the end of the tunnel. And Lindell, how have you been coping post-COVID? And any final words before we wrap up here now? Uh, I've been coping really well. Uh, but before, when I just came out, and I was home because I had to quarantine for 14 more days after being sent home from, after I got my second swap from any hospital, Every day as I came home, crying. I was just crying because it was just it was just memorizing like reminiscing about that experience. It, it break it down. But as they go by, every morning I'll read a verse, say a prayer, read a verse, say a prayer, and I think that will that actually strengthen up my my mental right now because that that connection I have with God. Because as I said, I was not that close in that spiritual realm. And I'm coming very close with it now. And I think that is actually helping me and helping me become a stronger person. And um, what I will advise other people is God is there to help you pray to God and he will provide everything you need. 100, 100% for the public. So, guys, thank you so much, Gray. Any final words for the public? of the forum tonight yes so my final words because i'm seeing a lot of people complaining that we're telling people to go get vaccinated but they can't get through and they call but get an appointment in the system guys i mean i'm not a spokesperson for the ministry of health by any means this is me just just saying you know when it is your turn when things open up you get the vaccine as soon as you can we got some good news today, as we said earlier, that we should be getting in more vaccinate, more vaccines very soon. And hopefully the process will be able to speed up. Hopefully as we get more people done, it's going to become like clockwork for us. It's going to be a factory line. We're going to be able to do more and more people. So I know it's difficult now in terms of getting an appointment, getting through to the numbers, but just holy strain, holy faith. We will get, we will get, we'll get through, you know? So don't give up on trying to get your appointment. And as soon as you do, take advantage. Let me take a shot. So thanks. Thanks again, Holly and Mandel, for, for sharing your experiences. It was really, I think, very enlightening for everyone watching, you know, and for, for Aaron as well to be able to hear firsthand. So I just hope that, again, everyone listening and go tell your friends, tell your family, encourage your aunts, uncles, grandparents to get vaccinated when it is their time, because that's what's going to get. For sure, for sure. And thanks again for Tribe. For yeah. So thank you so much, Dr. Anton, for your wisdom and your guidance. Thank you to our panel. We really, really appreciate your time and sharing these stories with us about your road to recovery. 
to this state of somewhat personal normalcy. And I believe we as a, a nation, a global world, can be pushing to that level of normalcy as well. Lindell, Holly, Dr. My name is Aaron Fingal. This has been Let We Take a Shot on this episode with I Got COVID and our personal experience. Ladies and gentlemen, look out for some more with the Let We Take a Shot team next week. We have some more stuff to offer you all on Twitter space and on Instagram story, on Instagram live. So look out for the updates on the Carnival Tribe page and keep it locked right here as we have more information and more insight for you all, for the globe, for the wider, wider world on COVID-19 vaccination and how we're going to get to that step of normal. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, guys.